people don't believe that this is the key to success because we live in such an Amazon Prime fast society. But guys, listen up. We've got Jeff later on. We're going to deep dive. Stay tuned. I'm Christy Code Red, and you're listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle where we believe food holds the power to heal or poison, and we believe our society has been misled regarding proper nutrition and weight loss. You're in the right place if you're looking for some straight up truth, because I'm here to shed light on the lies and brainwashing that has taken place over the past five decades. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome back to another episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. I'm your host, Christy Code Red, author, entrepreneur, retired professional boxer. And I have, I hope, not worn out my welcome with IFBB Pro Jeff Later. Thank you for being on again. I texted him. I was like, can you podcast with me? And he goes, I have a little bit of a window of time. And I said, I would love to get your perspective. Jeff, thank you for being on here. Company owner a retired pro bodybuilder with you had 40 competitions under your belt. I don't know anybody with 40 competitions. You run a successful supplement company, a coaching company. You've been doing this a long, long time. Uh, you're in your forties. You coach men in their forties. You coach women. You, you know, you've, you've been around and you really have a good perspective on a lot of different areas. And I really hope that this is going to be, I think this is going to be a good one. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for the the intro. Um, yeah, the the topic that we're going to be discussing today, uh, I have a lot of uh, thoughts on. In my experience coaching a lot of people over the years, and and obviously doing it myself, and yeah, looking forward to it. So small steps are better than no steps. Now, the reason that this that I have done other podcasts, we're coming up on 300 episodes, and we've done lots of other podcasts. We've taken different angles about the whole all or nothing mindset, the whole like Amazon prime fast. And we have this outlook on if I can't do it hundred percent, I'm not going to do it at all. And I have learned now being in this industry 25 years that the small steps truly are the key to making it work. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going all in. There's nothing wrong with going just like, just like the transformation when I did my, my film for Amazon prime, that's fine. That's fine. And we went all in and we did, it, it was a great film, whatever, but that, that is not really quite the way to a, what do you think, Jeff, is this the way to really, um, approach things, fitness, life company, like what, you know, what is your outlook on this? Well, I mean, you can look at it in two ways. I mean, the, the all in mentality, I think is, is where a lot of people fall where they're either all in or they're all out. And that's understandable. It's like you, you want to, if you're going to do something, you want to do it right. Um, and you want to dedicate everything you have into it. But what happens so many times to so many people is that they fail because they try to go all in and such a, an abrupt change from what they were doing. If, if we're talking about fitness or anything else, really it's such an abrupt change from their daily living to now this new lifestyle or this new plan, this new program that they're doing that they fail because there, there were no, um, there was really no graduation from one step to the next. They just drew a line in the sand and made that huge change. Now for some people that works and it's a, it's a, it's a big shift, even though it is uncomfortable, they're willing to make the steps or go through the steps to make that happen. Other people, they probably need a little bit more of a, not necessarily baby steps, but a step-by-step -step process to get to that place where they are all in. And it kind of just depends on the person. I, I can see both ways. I'm a little bit more of an all in type of person myself that doesn't always work out for my clients. So. Right. And that's why we put people through the 10 pound takedown. We put them through a 30 day challenge and, and it's a low, it's a low ticket, low, uh, commitment, I guess, uh, I think, I don't know, low commitment, low financial commitment. And we mm. get them to just do that first 30 days where they are just doing the basics, the, the water, the sleep, getting on the scale each day, following a food list and following 10 simple rules. And they get to lose that first 10 pounds and it builds confidence. And so do you, do you like, do you find that baby stepping people in doing something like that kind of a, is a, is a better approach at least for them to realize they can do it and then they can jump to the next kind of a VIP level? Well, I think nothing is more motivating than results. And I think having somebody see an outcome from their efforts right off the bat is one of the most motivating things for, for most people. And so if they don't see that on the, on the flip side, then a lot of times they'll just quit. 
I'm like, well, I've been working at this for two weeks, which is it's a ton of time. Oh my gosh, 14 days. And I don't see anything. I'm just going to stop. Right. And that mentality obviously isn't going to result in anything. But I think on our side, if we can facilitate a change and maybe it is small steps, maybe it's big steps, but if we can help them see that, yes, it is possible for your body to change because a lot of people believe that it's not. And that's really probably one of the biggest obstacles for most people is they don't believe that that's possible for them or that they can do it. But if we can show them that they can, then they're more likely to continue, right? So sometimes it's that it's playing into that psychological need to see change. Um, and I, you know, I think you can look at it both ways because I run a challenge as well. And we actually do as part of the, the challenge, we, we ask them to be 100% all in. There's no like dabbling. If you dabble, you're not going to see results, right? And I always, I always look at things from like a grade perspective. We were talking about this where it's like, we, we ask you to be 100% with your nutrition. If you're 80%, that feels like you're doing it, right? You're, you're, you're 80% of the time you're, you're following the meal plan. You're, you're on point. But if you were to get a grade on a test, that's actually a B minus. That's not very good. 80% sounds very good. B minus doesn't sound very good. So sometimes you have to put it in perspective and be like, well, maybe you need to go all in. Maybe you need to be closer to 100%. Maybe you need to get on the honor roll, so to speak, and, and push yourself so that you can actually get the result that you're after. Because if you dabble, most of the time you don't see anything. But you, but is moderation dabbling? I think it depends on what it is. If, you, if you're executing one thing at a time, then, then I don't know if that's dabbling. It's just taking one step at a time. But if you're kind of dabbling in all sorts of little areas and you're inconsistent with things, you're, I don't think you're going to see an outcome. But I think that's the expectation that we have. And I think a lot of people have the expectation that they, if they're changing, if, if what they're doing is better than what they were doing before, then they should see an outcome, which I think they're not necessarily wrong with that assumption. But Oftentimes, you're, it, that comparison isn't necessarily going to get you the result. You're like, well, it's better than what I was doing, so I feel like I should, I should look better. I should be losing more weight. Well, if you're not losing weight, then obviously it's not good enough. Like simple as that. So you need to make sure that you are checking the boxes probably a little bit more consistently than, than you think you should. I know when people come to Code Red, usually they try, we are the last resort before bariatric surgery. And we get some big, very big, very sick people in Code Red. Our average starting weight is 221. So they're pretty big ladies that usually need to lose close to 100 pounds. Um, so I am like, let's go. Like, we don't have the option to, uh, like, you, you, it's time to pay the piper. You know, it's, it's, there's, there is no mm, kind of, there is no date night with your husband. Sorry. There is no, uh, you know, your you get to have a, um, a cupcake from your grandchild's birthday party. Sorry. You screwed around for too many years and too many decades. Now you're getting ready to lose a foot from peripheral neuropathy mm. and it's time to pay the piper. And so I, I, I can't imagine somebody not going all in, but these people, they all, they, they all have their line and even losing a foot, they haven't reached their line. I mean, am I, am I crazy here? I'm just, I get a little bit, I get a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy with these people that come to us that are very, very sick and they still won't go all in. Yeah. That's an interesting thing that I've seen in my, in my experience as well with working with other people is that they could be told by their doctor that, Hey, if you don't make a lifestyle change, you're not going to make it to the age of 40. You're not going to make it to the age of 50. And even still, it's not enough motivation for them to get uncomfortable and getting on. And that's really what it is. We want to stay in our comfort zone. It's easy for me to eat ice cream. It's easy for me to sit on my ass. I instead, maybe you need to get a little bit more uncomfortable and embrace the discomfort, push yourself to new heights. Cause that's the only way you're going to see a change is on the other side of discomfort. But a lot of times we're just not willing to do that, even when you're faced with severe consequences. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the frustrating thing. I mean, I remember seeing in this gym that I used to go to up on the, the they had used to have TVs throughout the, the gym and on one of the gyms or one of the TV screens, they had a profile for one of their coaches, one of their trainers, and they showed his before and after, and they had a little blurb about his transformation. He said, and it was basically that exact same thing where he he met with his doctor and he's like, hey, if you don't make some lifestyle changes due to your current state and family history, you're not going to make it to the age of 40. That 
was enough for him to make the change. So he he made the changes that he needed to make because he wanted to be around for his kids. He wanted to live past 40 and have a good quality of life. But it took that warning. It took that, that, that uh, counsel from his doctor for him to make that change. Otherwise, I don't know that he would have. You know, so sometimes it does take like not necessarily fear mongering, but like severe consequences facing them down to actually make a change. And I, I think for a lot of people in the position that they are in when they come to you, they've they had the pain is high enough, it's strong enough that they they realize that they do need to go all in and that there's no other choice. So I don't necessarily disagree with all in or moderation. I think that it just kind of depends on the person. Well, I've only met two people in my life. You would be number three who can actually do moderation. Like, I mean, I just don't see a lot of people that can keep Oreo cookies in their cupboard and only pull out two every Friday night. And I just, I haven't been able to see that too much. And recovering sugar addicts are like recovering drug addicts. They don't keep drugs in their cupboard. Well, yeah, you do. I do believe you need to control your environment, but you also need to know your triggers, you need to know your limitations. So if you know that if you're seeing it every day and it's in front of you and it's going to be impossible for you to avoid, then yeah, don't have that stuff around you. Get rid of it, get, get it out of your environment, give it to your friend, give it to your neighbor, throw it away, whatever it is that you need to do. Just don't, you know, out of sight, out of mind, right? For most people. Um, I, yeah, at this point in my career where I, you know, I, I followed the strictest diet in the world for well over a decade decade and and basically didn't allow myself to have any sort of deviations um i have a little bit more moderation in my lifestyle now but i've kind of paid my dues so to speak but i still live i mean i, I think if anybody followed me around for a day they're like oh you eat very healthy and you have a very active lifestyle I'm like yeah that's just who i am it's not hard for me though this is this has now become easy because it's just who i am have you noticed, because I've noticed this too, that people forget the pain of where they were before. So they, they had psoriatic arthritis or they had, you know, they had all, something that was severe and, and difficult and they were able to lose the weight, get them, pull themselves out of that disease or out of that situation. And then they forget the pain of what it was like before and go right and you go, did you not remember that you were on chemotherapy drugs to treat your psoriatic arthritis? Have you noticed that too? Yeah, there's all sorts of self-talk like that where they either forget or they justify inside their, in their mind. They're like, well, it wasn't that bad. You know, I guess it wasn't, I guess I'm not that overweight. And I guess it's not that important that I'm around for my kids or that I play with my kids or that I'm able to you know, walk up and down the stairs with relative ease. I guess it's not that important. And that's, that's the story that we start to tell ourselves and we start to justify. We're like, no, it's not, it's pretty normal. I mean, most people around me, they have a belly and they're, you know, they're overweight. So that's pretty normal. And yes, that is, be, has become the norm. That doesn't mean it's right or healthy or that you're going to live a long life. That's high quality, mm -hmm. right? So you gotta, you gotta remember your why. And that's something that we remind our, our clients that we work with of. It's on the, the front page of their plan. This is the why that we talked about. And I bring it up to them often. You want to be around for your kids. You want to be able to be active and play with your grandkids and live a high quality of life and not be a frail, frail old, weak, elderly person that doesn't live very long or that falls in the shower, breaks their hip, and they don't make it out of the hospital. That shouldn't happen happens all the time because people aren't active. They're not building muscle. They're not taking care of their health into their latter years. People don't think it's going to happen to them. Um, I, my mom, and I don't even know my mom usually listens to my podcast. Hi mom. She doesn't, she, she isn't mom. I love you. Just want you to know, but she doesn't, she doesn't take care of herself like I think she should. <laughs> Mom's like, Christy Lynn, I can't believe you're saying that. Oh, I'm going to say it, Mom. And um, she, I just don't think she realizes, I mean, if she falls down and she breaks a hip, it's going to be game over for her. She's not going to be able to recover. She doesn't work on her strength. She doesn't work on her flexibility. And it's frustrating to me. Yeah. People don't think it's going to happen to them. They don't, they think, well, I got this, I got this, I got this. And then they hang around people who are feeding into them. You look fine. Five pounds is no big deal. One bite won't matter. Well, it's not one Costco yeah. sample, guys. It's one on every single Costco aisle. And it just adds up, adds up, adds up. 
Yeah, that's that's there's a couple different points from there. I mean, for one, how things add up. I think that's something that we chronically underestimate. I mean, this has been well documented through many, many different studies. And you'll hear this talked about by other fitness professionals and researchers that most of the time, I think that we assume or that we think that we're eating pretty good. Like I hear that all the time, like Jeff, I, I eat pretty good, you know, but I, for some reason I keep gaining weight. And I'm like, well, let's look at that. And, and so sometimes I'll have them monitor, like keep a log of what it is that you eat. And that alone can modify behavior because if they happen to write it down, it's going to change what they actually do. But if somebody were to secretly follow them around each day, they would discover they're probably eating a thousand calories more than what they assume. Mm. Because we underreport, we underassume what it is that we're actually doing because it's usually small uh, portions each time. Oh, an Oreo here, you know, a bite of my kid's mac and cheese there, or, you know, we take a bite while we're cooking or we finish our kid's food because we don't want to waste it or whatever it is, right? These little things, these bites, looks and tastes, they add up. And sometimes to the tune of a thousand calories, 2000 calories for some. And that's where we get ourselves into trouble. Um, I, I have a story of this guy that I, I trained that um, in his office, they had a subscription to a nut company. And so they had you know little bowls of nuts, like almonds, mixed nuts throughout the off uh, the office. <laughs> and I don't know, this is funny, I guess, <laughs> but um his, he had lost about 60 pounds and his boss came up to him one day and sitting at his cubicle and he had a handful of nut, nuts in his, in, in his hand that he had grabbed it. And he's like, so what's the secret? How did you lose the 60 pounds? And he's like, well, for one, I would not do that. And he, what do you, he says, what do you mean? He was pointing to his, his hand that had the, the handful of almonds. And he's like, what do you mean not eat these? Almonds are healthy for you. They're good for you. Right. And he's like, yeah, but it's also about 200 calories in your hands. And the guy's like, well, I do this four or five times a day. So you're, you're telling me I'm getting 800 to a thousand calories extra per day. Like, yeah, even though it's healthy, quote unquote, or clean, quote unquote, it's still calories. And so that's one, another way I think where we justify, if we think that it's clean or it's healthy and that's what other people will do too. When they try to tempt you, like, why can't you eat this? It's healthy. It's clean. It's good for you. Well, it may not be good for you because it's more calories and you've already eaten what you're supposed to eat for today. So yeah, you, you get peer pressure from people all the time. You rationalize and and then we get bad information. Well, that, and that's two pounds a week. And also people underestimate what they're burning. I know that I do a three mm -hmm. mile run with Hazel almost every morning uh, and I burn just under 200 calories and the better shape I get, and the leaner I get and the lighter I get, it's just so hard to burn those calories. It's so hard mm -hmm. to get that, you know, it's so hard to get my heart rate up and uh, people definitely underestimate and they go by what the machine says, which is not calibrated for you, your mm -hmm. height, your age, your weight, anything, your gender. And unless you're wearing a chest strap, monitor that is, you know, calibrated for you, you don't and really, you don't know, and your people always overestimate that they're burning more than they did. Yeah, and that's that's a, a thing I hear about people when they go to the gym. It's like, well, I work out so that I can eat what I want. I'm like, well, that's pretty bad math because you're not burning as much as you may think. And when you look at like the four different ways that we burn calories throughout the day, the basal metabolic rate is the number one burner, right? So that's just what's required to keep the keep the lights on to keep you alive. Exercise activity accounts for a fairly small amount of calories burned for most people. Now you can increase that. That is a variable that you can increase, but for most people, it's it's not that much. So yeah, in, in an hour long cardio session or weight training session, you're maybe only burning a couple hundred calories, not the thousand that the machine machine is saying that you're burning. So that's why the math doesn't add up. You're like, oh, I, you know, I'm gonna have a leg. I'm gonna do a leg workout so I can enjoy a burger tonight. It's like, okay, so. You're going to burn 200 calories so you can consume 1200. Bad math, bad math. And people just don't understand that. One of the first things that I saw you post uh, when I first started following you was a calorie, was a, a calorie post, a calorie reel. And you just said, bottom line, end of the day, it, it comes down to calories. Yeah, which some people will argue is an oversimplification. And in, in a way it, it can be, sure. right? But you do need to understand that it's quite simple. If you want to lose weight, you need to be in a caloric deficit. If you want to gain weight, you need to be in a caloric surplus. Simple as that. So if you're not losing weight, you are not in a caloric deficit. And not all calories are created equal. That One of the four ways that we burn calories is thermic effect of food, which is the calories that we burn through the digestive process. 
And protein burns more calories in the digestion process than fat or carbs. And that's one thing that like, that's why I love to prioritize protein. Plus we need it for, it's essential for our survival. Um, but it's, that's one of the things where people can start to uh, think that it's incorrect. The calories in versus calories out is not true. Um, but because you know, like, well, I ate a thousand calories of, of carbs and a thousand calories of protein. I'm like, yes, that's true. Calories in was the same, but calories out was different because you burn more calories in the, pro in the digestive process for protein, about 20, 25% compared to about 7% of carbs. I know, um, that Weight Watchers was one of the first to, they'd come out with the Weight Watchers, you know, what, think what you want about them. But, and I've done, I've done podcasts comparing Code Red versus Weight Watchers. And I've taken a lot of things from Weight Watchers, um, but they were one of the first people to come out with bites, nibbles, tastes, bites, lists, mm. tastes, whatever, the BLTs. And they would have people throughout the day put in a baggie everything they would put in their mouth. And then you'd mm. see it over the course of that's a great way to get fat, just shoving crap in your pie hole that doesn't belong there. And it's mindless eating. We don't even know we're mm. doing it. And we eat to soothe. We eat to cope. We eat to deal with crap. And people are always shoving, shoving crap down their throat. And they're just so unaware. Yeah. It's the snacks. It's the grazing that, that is small portions at a, at a time. And it, uh, even when they, you know, I'm watching this documentary series about, you know, some of the foods in their history and snacks weren't a thing in the past. They weren't part of, uh, of the American diet or even just part of our culture. It was just three square meals a day, but as food technology enhanced and as food companies and entrepreneurs created new products, snacking became a thing. And now we're just grazing throughout the day, but it's not enough to ruin your dinner, so to speak. It's just enough to like, keep you satiated, but we come, we become very adapted to a basically a consistent flow of food into our mouths mm. and that's probably one of the biggest drivers behind us being obese as americans let me take you guys back to the emerald cup april of 2023 when i placed in the top three and i was so excited you know after the film and 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 you know i competed and everything was fine and for a, a long time, I kept my body fat down and my weight down. And uh, I know that you're gonna, you're just gonna smile and nod when you hear this. But in what I, what I noticed was, and it slowly crept back on. And what I noticed was how little it took if I just would have made small, consistent steps each day towards my fitness, towards my nutrition towards my hydration and my sleep, just small steps. If I just would have, it didn't take much to keep it up. It didn't take as much as it took to get down to that level, but keeping that, that weight off and the body fat down, it was just small steps each day consistent. And if I just would have gotten that part through my head, then it's amazing how little it takes to keep up what it, what you're trying to do, keep your weight off and keep your body fat down, but it does take consistency. Yeah, it certainly does. And when you push your body to a place where it's not comfortable, it's going to do everything it can to get back to where it is. So there's like the whole set point theory. It's where, where your body likes a certain weight. It likes a certain uh, body composition. And your body wants to maintain homeostasis. It wants it to stay where it's at. And whenever you start to try and lose body fat or any sort of weight, any sort of mass, your body views that as a threat to its own survival. And your body's number one job is to stay alive. And so when you start to lose mass, your body starts to try and become more efficient. It starts to lower its metabolic rate, lower hormonal output, lower thyroid output, so that you burn less calories. So you stop losing weight. This is one of the reasons why we plateau, right? And we don't realize this, but it's the little things that when you start giving it a reason to gain, when you're in that basically where your body's uncomfortable, it's at an uncomfortable low weight, it's going to use that excess food, that surplus of food to put weight back on and try and get back to normal. It wants to maintain homeostasis. You are not in homeostasis when you've lost all this weight. You can get there and you can reset your body's set point, but it takes effort. You have to, you have to maintain your habits and practices. Otherwise, yeah, it will creep on. It might be slow at first or it could be fast, but it will creep back on because that's where your body wants to go. So you have to be very diligent to maintain that once you've reached your goal weight and your goal composition. Otherwise, yeah, you, you'll just go right back to where you were. But you have, you've built a career and your claim to fame is the fact that it doesn't take 
as much time in the gym to maintain your build. I mean, you have an incredible mm. amount of muscle on you. You're a big dude and thick and big. And, but it doesn't, it doesn't take what people think, you know, you're not doing loads of cardio. You're not mm. with, lifting for two hours a day. You're not doing six. I don't know. I mean, it's surprisingly not as much of an effort, but it's consistent effort. Is that what the key is with you keeping your mass on? Yeah, at this point in my career, I'm not trying to build more muscle. Um, and even, even if I lost a little bit, I'd still be okay with that. But I haven't really lost much muscle since I retired uh, from my, you know, my bodybuilding days. And it's been six and a half years. But I, even when I was competing and I was trying to build, I would only weight train. It would be less than an hour every day. Every once in a while, you know, if I was taking my time, it would maybe go over an hour. But that's one of the top questions I get after, you know, of course, the typical question of how much do you bench? The next question is how many hours, plural, per day do you spend in the gym? And it's not plural, it's one or less than one. Now I will do cardio sometimes outside of that would add that would add to the time. But when it comes to weight training, which is what everyone thinks is the only thing that bodybuilders do, it, yeah, I don't spend an excessive amount of time. But to maintain the physique that I've got right now, my workouts actually are 40 minutes or less. Oftentimes they're 30 minutes. And that's, it's does everything that I need to do. But when you are trying to, but I'm not trying to change my body. I'm just trying to stay where I'm at. If I wanted to change my body, then yeah, I would probably need to put a little bit more time in or maybe be a little bit more diligent with, with my nutrition. Um, and that's where most people are at. So if they're, they're trying to change from where they're at and trying to get somewhere else, it's going to take more effort. But once you get there, it's not going to take as much, but it does still require effort. Yes. I, I have changed my stance on my approach to clients over the years. I used to be in the earlier years. I used to be, I mean, I had a program called Code Red Car Hardcore, and that's when people could coach with me directly. And I was so, I was so hardcore. I mean, it was, <clears throat> I wanted 100% all the time from people. There was no wiggle room. I had no give in me, zero give. And I really took it personally when these people did not, when that did not go 100%. Some people remember the old school, the old school, Christy and people like old school people will say to the new people and they say, you don't even remember Christy back then. But nowadays I find myself saying to people, well, what can you do for me? What can you give me? You know, and, or mm. especially when I see like someone's lost a parent or somebody's going through some sort of a crisis, you know, one of the top five crises that people can go through in their life. I say, what can you do? Can you just drink your water each day? Can you turn off your phone and go to, go to bed a little bit, um, a little bit sooner each night? Do you have different tiers of working with people? Do you have kind of a, an entry point if they're at this level or at this level, or do they come to see you when they're only at this level? So my coaching style is what I would call free form, meaning I adapt it to that person. So if somebody is struggling, trying to do everything, then we'll start simple, right? There was even one guy that um, famously within our group, this is a story that's been told where he wasn't even brushing his teeth every day. And so that was the habit. It's like, hey, let's start brushing your teeth every morning and every night. Let's let's dominate that habit. Let's make that a, a consistent part of your daily routine. And he went from that to following his meal plan, his nutrition plan, 100% and had a huge transformation. But sometimes you just need to prove to yourself that you can stay consistent with something. Because some people have never been consistent with anything in their entire lives. And they just think that it's not, I'm not like you, Christy. I can't do what you do. I'm just, I'm, I'm different. I'm from, a, I'm cut from a different thread. I'm just, I'm not the same person, but it's because they haven't seen it yet. So we need to show them that, yes, you can do that. Look what you did. Let's build upon that and build upon that and that and that and that. And all, pretty soon they are hardcore and they're doing everything that they need to do. But sometimes people just haven't had any experience with that. And so you need to get, help them see and prove to themselves that they can do it. And then you have to start small sometimes. I know with us, we have a seven day reset um, and it's for people who are so low that they have to reach up to touch the bottom. Like they are lower than low. Like they are, they're so at rock, they're below rock bottom. Rock bottom is above them. They are really, really, and it's bare bones basic. And it's just, can you give me seven days? And, and it's hand holding and it's baby steps, walking them through uh, just baby steps for seven days. And once they get through the seven days, uh, then we go, okay, now 
let's do a 30 day with, can you just do, can you, can you hold my hand for 30 days? And we walk them through, walk them through. And then after that they go, okay. Cause success builds confidence and the more Absolutely. success that they, that they have, then they're like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. You know? And uh, I like I like that, that coaching style that you have where you, um, where you meet them where they are. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's important. I think sometimes, you know, it's gotta, the shoes gotta fit. And if you give them something that is, not where they're at. If you don't meet them where they're at and you basically try to put somebody that's a beginner onto an advanced level program, you're setting them up for failure. Right. And, and that's, that's not my job. My job is to show them that they can succeed and create that path and show them the way to, to be successful. And so I think it's, it's, you know, it's my responsibility and my coach's responsibility to show that to them, meet them where they're at, give them something that they can accomplish and then just build upon it. And that's how habits become permanent and, and how uh, transformation becomes permanent. So with your muscle mastery program, w w do you have a, like a pretty extensive comprehensive questionnaire that they fill out and you, you get on the phone with them, you really kind of spend a lot of time with them in the, in the beginning. And then that's how you build out their program. Yeah, we have a very thorough questionnaire. Um, and then there is a welcome call where we walk through everything and, and make adjustments as we go. Um, you know, the interesting process with all this is initially it's always, it's not necessarily a guess. It's, it's an educated estimate of where we, we need to be right. Based on the data and the information that we have, here's the plan that we've come up with. Let's start it. Let's see how your body is responding. If it's not responding the way we would expect, then we'll make adjustments. And that's part of our programming and our coaching is we make adjustments as we go, because your, as your body changes, the demands and, and the, the programming needs to change as well uh, because you're not, you can't just follow one program and expect it to work over and over and over again for years on end. That's just not going to be the case. Your body adapts too quickly. And so we have to follow that adaptation and make sure that sometimes re, we're reactive to it. Sometimes we're proactive and to make sure that we never even hit that plateau. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's based on a lot of information and a lot of feedback where we're not just looking at the weight, but we're also listening to their biofeedback. Like, how's your stress level? Are you sleeping? How's your energy? Is your strength improving? All sorts of things like that that help me understand what's going on with them. And then I can adjust the program accordingly. I know that you've said on other podcasts, um, not all days are going to be good days. You just show up. Not all workouts are going to be good. Not all everything. It's not always going to be uh, perfect. It's not going to be a 10 out of 10 every time, uh, but that still is a small step towards the goal. You're still making progress. You're still, uh, you're still burning the calories. You're still, you know, like, even though the, I know, you know, you're banging out a set and it's just, it's just ugly. And you're like, it's ugly. That was an ugly set or a cardio session was like, God, I had nothing in the tank, but you're still doing something. Yeah. Something's better than nothing. And not all workouts are going to be this, this epic, amazing, fulfilling workout, um, cardio or weight training. And you're going to have days that you just struggle, but those are the days that matter most. It's kind of like the, you know, when you go to the gym, when you really don't want to go, that's how you set yourself apart. And that's how you, you kind of groom yourself for future challenges as well. Because if you, if you crumble, whenever you're faced with opposition, you're basically just teaching your body or you're teaching yourself, you're training yourself to do that every other time you're faced with opposition. So when time gets a little bit more scarce or you have a trip or you get sick or you have a small injury, whatever it may be, if you stop your efforts when you're faced with that, that challenge, that's what's going to happen every other time. But guess what? Life is full of challenges. That is going to happen. Something is going to come in your way. And it's your choice, your decision to either find a way to work through it or use it as an excuse to give up. It's very simple. You and I talk a lot about uh, Alex Hormozzi, um, and and Alex and Layla are are, are very successful. Uh, they own a company called Acquisitions.com, and they buy other companies. They do about a hundred million a year in revenue. And it, I just was listening to podcast, and he said, "Just do something's better than nothing." Like what you just said, just do something, just do something. And I know as entrepreneurs, just put out some kind of content. It ain't gotta be perfect, you know. These people, these business owners, they think there's gotta be a perfect green screen, and their hair and makeup's gotta be perfect, and and they can't ever mess up. Jeez, nobody gives a rat's fanny. Just put out something for crying out loud. And and we just want it to be perfect, or we don't want to do anything at all. And 
I just was in the, I was in the van coming back from the airport and I was talking to the kid driving the van at the shuttle, the Grove hotel provides shuttles for us to us owners to go back and forth to the airport. It's a great perk. And I was talking to the kid cause he's like nine. He's like nine, Jeff. They're all nine nowadays, <laughs> by the way, they're yeah. nine. And, and he just got a degree in marketing with a minor and, or some sort of entrepreneur. And I said, well, what are you doing? What are you selling? He said, I don't know. I just haven't sold anything yet. I said, just do something, buddy. Just, I don't care, sell shoelaces. Nobody cares, but start selling something, start doing something. Yeah, done's better than perfect. And I'm definitely guilty of uh, being a perfectionist and trying to check every single box before uh, I've, I've really launched anything or sold anything. Um, in some cases that can be good, but most of the time it's it's going to hurt you. And, and like this, as we talked about with fitness, like if you can accomplish something and you can get a win, just build upon that. And if you perfectionist, you know, I have that mentality a lot, but it, it really just is a different form of procrastination. If you look at it and we're, we're just putting things off because like, no, this could be different. This could be better. And then oftentimes we will look back with regret and like, oh man, I, it, this could have been a lot better than it is. And there's, there's actually a great book, um, by Dan Sullivan called the gap and the gain. And he talks about these different mentalities. If we operate in the gap mentality, we are constantly comparing ourselves to other people or we're comparing ourselves to the ideal. Well, it would have been better had I done this. I, if I would only be like this person, instead of appreciating the accomplishments that we, we do have and the things that we have done and how far we've come. And that's, that can be definitely applied when it comes to our fitness journey. And oftentimes we don't appreciate the changes that we've made in our life, the, the pounds that we've lost, the people that we've influenced, the better mood that you have when you're around your spouse or your friends or your coworkers, all of this, I think fitness touches every single aspect of your life. But we don't see it oftentimes, especially before we're in it, but it will touch every single area of your life in your business. I would say your body and your bank account are tied together. You improve your fitness, you're gonna make more money. You're gonna have better relationships. You're going to have a better influence. You're going to be more happier. You're going to have an even better mood. Life's going to be more fulfilling. You're not being. Uh, you're going to live in your purpose. So it's it's. Uh, I kind of went off on a tangent there, but it's it it's. Yeah, start somewhere. Get some wins. Build upon it, and don't stop. I just saw a lady on the street yesterday, uh, and or the day before and, and we were, I was walking Hazel and, and she said, Christy code red. And she said, I said, hi, of course, everybody, but this is always what happens. They go Christy code red. And I say, hi. And then they just go and they just stare. So I, I don't know why they, I don't know if they know my dad. I don't know if they know me from code red or I don't know what they know. And so I said, our, I always say the same thing. Are you one of my rebels? And she said, I, I used to be. And I said, well, mm -hmm. how's it going? You know? And she said, Oh, it's just, you know, just, I lost a bunch of weight and gained it back. And, and I'm just having a hard time getting started. And I said, what, what, um, what part are you having a hard time getting started with? And, and she was thinking she had to do all of it. You know, she had to go back to her customized program that I wrote for her a couple of years ago. She had to go back into everything. And she, and you certainly can, you can go, you can go all in, you can jump in, uh, and go all in. And I, I, I'm that way too, Jeff. I'm, I'm like, let's go, let's go all in, you know? But I said, well, can you just, can you just turn off TikTok and go to sleep? You know, cause she had mentioned that sleep is suffering, everything's suffering. And I said, could you just turn off your TikTok and, and go to sleep a little bit earlier tonight? You know, can you just drink, drink a gallon of water tomorrow? You know, and, and they just don't see that as progress. If I'm not doing the full program, I'm not doing enough or I'm not doing anything. Guys, small steps are better than no steps at all. Yeah. It's kind of like ADD. In fact, I catch myself doing this. I have, I'm sitting in front of two large, uh, computer monitors and I have a million windows open and I couldn't, I can catch myself working on 10 different things really? and not getting any of them done. <laughs> right. But if I just focused on one and I accomplished that, maybe that's the only thing that I do today. And then tomorrow, the same thing. And the day after that, same thing, you're going to get a lot more done in that period of time than you were if you were trying to do 10 things at once. And I think that, you know, if you kind of dabble with the different fitness efforts, you know, try to drink a little bit more water, but you kind of fail at it. And you, you try to eat a little bit more protein, you try to be a little bit more active, but you're just not very consistent with any of them. You're kind of teaching yourself failure and you're kind of proving to yourself like, yeah, I can't do this. Maybe I did bite off more than I, than I can chew. But if you just focus on one thing at a time, 
and execute and execute and execute. And pretty soon it just becomes habitual. You don't even have to think about it. A habit really is, it's a learned behavior that you don't really have to think about it anymore. I mean, when you go to bed, before you go to bed, you brush your teeth. Did you want to brush your teeth? No, that's just something that you do. It's, it's part of what you do. And you, you, know, you take a shower and all these things become habits. You don't have to want to do it, but it just becomes a part of who you are, becomes a part of your routine. And pretty soon there's really no effort. Like living the lifestyle that I live, it is easy. It's easy as heck because I don't have to think about it. I don't really have to make efforts to eat healthy food. And go to bed at a decent time and wake up at a consistent time every single day of the week, even on Sundays and Saturdays, because that's how I live my life. Now, other people, if they tried to live that life, it would be a hard, abrupt change. So maybe just take one thing at a time, as I did, and that's, that's how I got to where I'm at. I know in boxing, we teach six punches, but we hardly, we really only need to really get one punch that's a good punch. Uh, you know, you really only need to get good at one punch. And I know that I used to train the NYPD when I lived in New York city and my job was to teach them one good punch and do it right. And, and do it and, and do it over and over and over. You just, you just need one good punch and you don't need to know all the fancy ones. You don't need to do the left hook to the liver. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to do the right hook to the body. You don't need to like, this. just you get too fancy. Then you can't do it. You're not good at any of them. And so I'd, I would teach the NYPD training the the training academy, one good punch. And if you can hit this guy, if you need to throw one good punch, let it be this one, do it right. And I think people just get way too complicated. If they can just, like you said, just nail those basics, just get consistent with a couple of things. It's like new year. It's like new year's resolutions. I'm going to do this, 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 this. Well, you're wondering why by day nine, you're failed all of them. Pick one or two, do it all year. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, it makes me think of uh, The Power List by Andy Frisella. He actually, I actually have this book sitting right here. Very simple. Oh. Very simple. And when you look at the, the inside, the contents of the book, you're basically just filling out your task list. It's your power list. But it's no more than five things. Because if you want to come up with your to-do list for today, you could list out probably two dozen things if you wanted to. But if you do that, you can almost guarantee that you're not going to, to accomplish all those things. And then it gets, gets discouraging, but it's very satisfying, very gratifying to check a box and have completed all the tasks you were supposed to do that day. And that's, that's something that I think, even when it comes to fitness, yes, there's the things that we need to do, but then there's other responsibilities that we have in life. Just take it one thing at a time and I, take it one day at a time. I think if we start to look too far down the road, if you do have a hundred pounds to lose, we will compare where we're at today to that end goal. And that's what we're constantly measuring. And we're constantly looking at this canyon of a difference that we need to, to close. And, and we can't picture ourselves on the other side of that, but instead just what do I need to do today? I need to eat my food. I need to exercise. I need to sleep. I need to drink my water. Cool. Done. Do that again the next day and the next day. And the next day, and just take it one day at a time. And pretty soon, it's a part of who you are, and you're on the other side of that canyon. I think it surprises people when they when they do see me somewhere, and they'll say, um, I lost 100 pounds on your program, but I gained 30 back. And my next thing is, so you kept 70 pounds off? And they always go, oh, 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 well, you're, you're not mad at me, Christy? And I go, you kept 70 pounds off. Oh, let's be proud of that. Like you saved your own life. And so they always think I'm going to be mad that they gained 30 back. And I always slip it around and say, geez, you kept 70 off, Karen. This is, a, this is great. Now, of course, I would love for them to keep all 100 pounds off. But, you know, and of course, that can get out of control and they can gain back, you know, and then all of a sudden they're like, they're down, they're down 20 instead of down 100, and, you know, but, but. I try to look at, we try to like, let's try to celebrate those wins guys. And let's try to make those small steps uh, instead of um, thinking, oh, it's I'm, I'm all or nothing. If I can't do all of it, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. That's like the gap in the game. They're focusing on the ideal. They're comparing themselves against the ideal versus appreciating how far they've come. And that's something that we need to do a lot more of and celebrate the wins, even if they are small, if you accomplish it, you accomplish it. That's an amazing feat. And yeah, they've kept 70 pounds off. That's pretty amazing. You're in a lot better position than you were before you started. 
If people want to coach with you, Jeff, the best place for them to reach out to you is Instagram. Yeah, that's the easiest way. Um, you know, my, my handle is just at Jeff later, J E F F L A T E R. Uh, and that's, that's where I spend a lot of my time when it comes to creating content, uh, sharing more stories as you have encouraged me to do. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I'm operating through the, the DMS in there. So yeah, if you have a question or are interested in coaching, just, uh, hit me up there. And you do have a, a, a one-stop shop. I like to call it a one-stop shop, a muscle mastery program that is going it to, it's going to get everybody everything they need. It's going to take care of the, all the, all the areas of their life that are going to cause them to level up everything from their nutrition to their fitness, to their hormones. You even, I think you even, I don't know if you do any business coaching with people, but you do deep dive into the mental aspect and, and you really try to make this a holistic experience for people, right? Yeah. I mean, it uh, really deep down, it, it's the decisions that we make and the behaviors that we change in our lives that lead to the outcomes that we want, even if it is physical. Um, so yeah, we do focus on, you know, the mindset side of things. I think you have to, if you're not, you're missing a huge chunk, um, but also incorporating it into your life, making this a part of your lifestyle. If you're trying to shoehorn yourself into something that really isn't a good fit, it's not going to, it's not going to work long-term. So everyone's situation is different. Everyone's background is different. Everyone's goal is different. And so that's why I, I say we take this free form coaching approach where it really is personalized to that person and your path may look different than the person next to you. And it, it probably will. But that's, that's what we're here to do is to make it fit for you so that it actually works. You get the outcome and you keep it. Well, once again, Jeff, I appreciate you letting me rope you into this and, and coming on here and talking to our rebels about, um, you know, small steps are better than no steps guys. And I, and I wish you would, would let go of that whole, if I can't do it perfect, then I'm not doing it at all. Well, geez, because your type two diabetes is out of control. Like this is just, it's getting, it's getting worse and worse guys. So thank you, Jeff, for being on here with me and uh, you guys hit up Jeff, at least give him a follow. He's got good content. He's a lot of fun to watch. And then maybe uh, you, you choose to work with him later on if, if what he's saying really resonates with you and you think you'd be a good candidate for his program until next time, guys, I will see you on the next episode of rebel weight loss and lifestyle. Take care. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening to rebel weight loss and lifestyle. If you are looking for some hardcore accountability to get and keep this weight off, look no further because I've got VIP connection. This is the ultimate connection to me just short of me sleeping on your couch. You're going to get three daily messages from me in real time directly to you. You're going to submit your weight every Friday. We're going to go over it in a weekly meeting on Sunday nights, and I'm going to give you feedback. You'll have access to a monthly VIP breakfast with me and Boise, a monthly VIP supplement box, access to any workshop, any PDF promo that I hold for that month, You'll have access to the ringside membership. And best of all, you'll have a fully customized nutrition program written just for you. We're talking about over $3,000 total value for $3.97 a month, and you can cancel any time. Go to coderedlifestyle.com forward slash VIP to check that out.